Well, here at home, hundreds of migrants have been camping out at the offices of the United Nations Refugee Agency in Cape Town and Pretoria. They've asked to be relocated to other countries after recent acts of violence against foreign nationals in the country. And for the latest on this issue, I'm joined in studio by two refugee leaders, Pastor Alec Mongo and uh, Aline Bukuru and Dr. Fusmuzi, Sibanda, uh, Fusmuzi rather, Sibanda from the African Diaspora Forum. Lady and uh, gentlemen, a very good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. All right, Alex, I'm going to start with you. Uh, if you could just give us uh, a brief history of how some of the migrants uh, found themselves camping at the UN offices. Oh, thank you very much. Um, the story is uh, the refugees in South Africa. They are suffering with a xenophobic attack from um, 11 years, uh, going to 12 years now. And uh, this xenophobic attack, we uh, refugees are the ones that lost many loved ones. We, uh, our shop have been looted. Our children, they don't have peace when they go to school. And ourselves, when we go to home affairs, we don't have, we don't have peace. We, we, like a, um, xenophobic attack is, is, is everywhere by the life of refugees. That we come to realize, uh, as refugees, we are not protected in South Africa. That's why we, uh, as refugees, we went to protest. It's not only protesting, it's a sit-in or sit-down by UNHCR office here in Pretoria and Cape Town is a result of xenophobic attack. Okay, so Aline, how long are you planning to camp outside the offices of the UN? I mean, I would imagine with the current weather patterns, uh, you don't have access to sanitation and you are exposed to these uh, weather conditions. I mean, how are you coping? Yeah, it's not so easy, but uh, we, as refugees, they say that uh, for them to get uh, their rights maybe to go there to camp by the United Nations Commission for Refugees, it's where they are going to get solution because in the community the keeper gets abused, attacked, killed and it seems like there's no help when they ran to the police and there's no help. So that is why they came together, they decided to go to sit there and ask the UNCR to relocate them out of South Africa. So how long are you planning to camp? Uh, the, uh, we, we, we are there until when we get solution, until when the UNCR answer on our demand. Mm. Dr. Sabanda, this can't be right. I mean, they are camping there for, for an indefinite period. And I mean, looking at the fact that uh, some of the children who are camped there are exposed to these terrible weather conditions and uh, lack of sanitation, as it were. Well, thank you very much. It is um, unacceptable. I mean, you know, we talk about, you know, uh, humanitarian law and that the United Nations, you know, uh, for example, High Commission for Refugees mm -hmm. is uh, responsible for refugees and, and asylum seekers. And as a result, what we are saying is basically that, you know, it should have already come in. I mean, we've got a few toilets, for example, I think now that were uh, donated by uh, the Nigerian Doctors Association. But the United Nations, I mean, uh, UNHC are practically refused, you know, to, to, to heed to that, to realize that, look, there is a humanitarian and, you know, crisis to, 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 to concern themselves about the impending, you know, outbreak of disease that was going to happen because, you know, the place was actually becoming, you know, inhabitable because there are children there and they cannot even go to the toilets to walk all the way down to, to the mall. So, yes, I mean, that is uh, very much unacceptable and we believe that the United Nations, you know, uh, High Commission for Refugees needs to really come to the party and make sure that, you know, an urgent solution is basically found, you know, to help resolve this. What is that case. solution that's been sought? Well, look, we, we understand. I mean, we have had, I mean, when we had engagements, we've had a meeting with the UNHCR and the South African Human Rights Commission and, you know, Department of Home Affairs. And in terms of basically resettlement or evacuation, because that is basically the term that was used, that, you know, this is a need, there is a need for evacuation because this is a crisis. You know, people are running away, uh, you know, they are fearing for their lives. So it can't be said to be just a resettlement. It has to be, you know, referred to as an evacuation. Now, the UNHCR said, look, we don't have a country. We cannot send you anywhere. But we are saying that, as much as that could have been the case, I think that they could have approached it in a better way to actually try and engage, you know, with the people that are striking, sit down with them, rather than, you know, what we have had. Because it looks like the UNHCR has been more defensive, you know, rather than try to deal with the situation. I mean, at one stage when we had a meeting, you know, the leaders were actually called into the meeting and they refused to drink water because for the past three weeks that they've been there, they've not been offered water. And now to come and offer them water when they're called into a meeting, that was hypocritical. So, I mean, that is where the problem is to say, UNHCR wants to you know to, to 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 negotiate to find how best we can deal with the situation but you're not doing that on a daily basis you know during the course of the day and, a, and any other day you show animosity towards the very same people that you know are dependent on you 
they are completely under the purview of the UNHCR to such an extent that the UNHCR should be the one that is leading in these you know, negotiations. We want government, for example, to come down and say there's an issue of xenophobic attacks and it's a major concern because property has been lost, lives have been lost. How do we deal with this situation? We are actually saying we've been trying to negotiate also you know, with the, 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 the refugees and asylum because they fall under our purview. They are also migrants to say, guys, we need to find a solution. But that solution, we understand if they're saying, but what is the solution? Because UNHCR has not even said offer to the government. Let's talk about the policing issue. Let's let's talk about you know the law, the prosecution of people that kill you know our migrants. So those are the kind of issues that we say. Let's have them come up on the top of the agenda so that we can say if we talk to them, say guys, you need to stay. You need to realize that government is doing everything that is possible, but there must be a solution. And so, we're not seeing that. So as the negotiations are in progress, uh, is there a, perhaps a plan in place? Because I understand that the UNHCR had offered temporary accommodation uh, for some of these migrants uh, while the negotiations are, are in progress, but then it was rejected. Well, look, we, we actually, I mean, uh, Commissioner Makwetla, you know, and myself, you know, basically are the ones that we're speaking to it. Commissioner Makwetla is supposed to be leading, you know, that team, that task team. But now, to, to offer that, for example, that, uh, you know, a temporary solution that it could be given without basically showing the consent, because it looked to the refugees, the people that are, it looked like, you know, trying to get rid of them. You see, when you come to people, you say, let's just take you and put your camp. And these people have been put in a camp in 2008, and they ended up being attacked. In 2015, they were put again in camps, where they ended up, you know, again left, you know, stranded. So now you want to say, when they're here again, want to take you and go and put you in a camp again, but you have not shown that you are interested in resolving their problems. I mean, some of the attributes that we got from the UNHCR were quite appalling. So. As, as we are going forward, we've actually organized that, you know, maybe we should again sit down and bring the other stakeholders. Commissioner Makwetla and the CEO of uh, the South African Human Rights are going to be trying to lead that. But we want to see practical, you know, uh, involvement, you know, from the stakeholders to say, we understand what are the issues in question. And this is how we're going to deal with these issues. Because at the end of the day, it's also difficult for us. We have to yes. talk. These people fall within our purview yes. to discuss with them and say, guys, we need you guys to move and real circle, you know, and be here. When at the end of the day, we are not able to provide to their basic needs. They need water. You know, they need sanitation. You need to show that, okay, they've got accommodation. But all of us are going to live here. We're going to our houses and they're going to sleep outside and nobody seems to care. So that's where the yes. problem is. difficult to, to, to go and negotiate when you don't tender, you know, to the person's basic needs. You understand? So, we, we, this week, I think, you know, there's a ministerial meeting. I had Commissioner Makwetla saying around about the 18th. But there's also a court case that is basically going. And we understand that, you know, Home Affairs and, and the police are basically, you know, uh, opposing. But they're not opposing on, on the merits. They're actually trying to find, you know, negotiations. But because the, 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 the application basically says the people should not sleep, you know, outside the UNHCR. But the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is the UNHCR is the one responsible. So if they don't want the people to sleep on the pen, maybe they should let them go inside the UNHCR so that the UNHCR must then stand up and, and resolve these issues. So what we should be doing or looking at is that this court case in Pretoria, for example, it should have made the UNHCR a respondent. But interestingly, UNHCR has been left out. So for me, it might look a bit, you know, mischievous that, you know, UNHCR is not taking its, its job seriously. We've also received complaints in Botswana already that we've got refugees and asylum seekers in Botswana that already, you know, the same office in Pretoria is dealing with and now these people are now being said they should they need to be repatriated because Botswana is not a refugee country and it cannot keep them indefinitely so they need a permanent solution and just about nine people i think over five ten years have been recycled but nothing else and they are now being forced to say we're repatriating you because they come from zimbabwe and it's it's said that you know zimbabwe is, is, is at peace everything is fine so and again, it all boils down to the office in Pretoria because that is the regional office, you know, within the southern, you know, southern Africa. So we really need a serious commitment from the UNHCR. Yeah, and uh, I would love us to talk about, uh, you know, the complexities of mass repatriation in a moment. But uh, Alex, what, what I need to, to get from you is, uh, which other countries have you uh, perhaps uh, wanted the UNHCR to repatriate you to? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, actually, as refugees, we don't have a choice because back in our countries, we've been um, we've been mistreated, we've been um, persecuted. Uh, we ran from the war, and we came to South Africa, thinking that South Africa would be our home. Um, by surprise, South Africa tend to become our hell, which we, we are dying with xenophobic attack. And uh, if you ask me which country that we need to be repatriated or resettled, uh, we, need, we know that uh, UNHCR doesn't have a country, but they have a right and they are very well in a good position to negotiate uh, because the world is too big. 
they can negotiate anywhere in the country where we can be uh, resettled because we, 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 we need our children to have a better future as well. We want um, to be in the country that there's no xenophobic attack mm -hmm. because since 11 years and going to 12 years, xenophobic attack has been taking place in South Africa and the losers and the victims, the vulnerable are the refugees. And, um, if we say the country, we, we need a country that we, we, we can feel at, at least uh, uh, comfortable, at least we can have, our children can have a future, our children can have at least better future, even ourselves. And I see this uh, xenophobic attack which is going on, is going to change a form to not be xenophobic attack, but it's going to change a form to become genocide. They will enter house by house because they know refugees, they don't have support from government, they don't have support from UNHCR, they don't have support from police, they know, these people they know. They will, this xenophobic attack, it will change to become a genocide. This is what we are, we are fearing and this is what we we scared of because we are the victims and we don't have anybody, we, we, are, we are like the voice less people we, we've been treated like dogs at uh, at uh, home affairs we have been treated as, as dogs by by the police nobody take uh, our matter serious it seems like uh, life of refugee doesn't matter in south africa and this is something that's going on and on and on it's going it change a way to become routine to south africans to kill xenophobic attack uh, to kill refugees when they have any problem when they have any quarrel when the government or let's say when they uh, authorities they are promising the people that they are going to do something when they fail to their promises they change the matter to say these are the people that are taking your job for example i can say um look first what's happened in cape town how can you go and attack somebody who doesn't have a weapon you know the refugees that they were there in cape town they're just going in and attack them they don't have a weapon they don't have anything they were very quiet people they are just seeking for their rights as we are thinking for our right here in, in, in Pretoria, the same as our brother and sister in Cape Town. But look how the police, the police, they're going to attack those people. That means xenophobic attack is even in the police. Yeah. I can say, uh, according to my uh, point of view, uh, South Africans, not all of them, but majority of South Africans, they are um, xenophobic minded because they don't feel to help refugees. Look, even here in South Africa, let's say um, UNCR here in South Africa, why they are delaying to help refugees, why they are delaying to, to, to take the matter serious for refugees. They are trying to say, to show people like, uh, no, we don't know about xenophobic attack, but everybody knows that xenophobic attack is in South Africa and the refugees are the losers. So we need um, people and in international community to stand for this matter because the losers are the refugees. We, we don't have country that we are targeting, but we need to be somewhere that we can have safety and uh, yeah. Yeah, at least safety place as well. Thank now, you. Aline, Alex just uh, correctly highlighted some of the challenges that are faced by migrants and, and, and refugees alike on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, I suppose it's an international problem. This, this is a perennial problem that is uh, experienced uh, literally everywhere. So have you perhaps uh, anticipated some of uh, these kind of challenges that you're facing in South Africa, um, you know, that so you, you probably might face to any other country that you may be uh, repatriated to? Yeah, before we talk for other country, we need to think where we are first. Because if we try to solve where we are not in, we'll, we'll keep failing. So first of all, we'd like to solve the issue which is in South Africa. We don't know any country because we've never been in the country from home. To South Africa. We thought South Africa is going to be a better home, but unfortunately it is not. So let's first think of South Africa. Let us stop denying our responsibilities. So we need the government to allow the UNCR to work to protect refugees, to reset refugees, because the UNCR, they always point government finger and uh, saying that... Uh, Resettle the refugees to where? I mean, whose responsibility should it be of resetting the refugees, I mean, and uh, identifying some of the countries? It, that is a UNCR mandate. Okay. Yes, there is a mandate. They know where how to negotiate and they know the country. But refugees, they know they don't know where, and refugees, they're not there to choose, but they know that... Uh, Refugees knows that is a UNCR work mandate to do so. Okay. Dr. Sabanda, on the 21st of October, there was a meeting between the Department of Home Affairs and the, and the Lawyers for Human Rights and as well as the South African Human Rights Commission. And 
There was a proposal to the effect that uh, a task team should be established, uh, you know, to build the social cohesion in the country and the Department of Home Affairs, uh, you know, checking on the status of each and every family and issue uh, the relevant documentation. But these kinds of proposals have been rejected and uh, all the other migrants and protesters instead opted for resettlement. But then uh, there, are, there are other complexities around the issue of uh, resettlement, uh, chief of which is the resettlement country's willingness to take in more refugees. Have you perhaps thought uh, thought about this? Well, look, uh, I think uh, that proposal, I would not say that it was uh, outrightly, you know, maybe rejected because the, the feeling again, I was actually part of that meeting. The feeling again, in fact, you know, even in the meeting, we were driving, you know, uh, the agenda to say, guys, we need to talk, to talk and have a proper dialogue. And I think that the problem is, you know, when we sit down, you know, to come to say, let's have a dialogue and people come with positions already, you know, that they want to come and defend. They don't come to, 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 to a negotiating table with an open mind. That is where the problem is because our feeling is that, number one, UNHCR should, be, should have been leading, you know, the process to basically say, we as an international body that deals, you know, with, um, you know, refugees and asylum seekers, we are the ones that are going to take, you know, these issues to the government to say, government, this is on your, you, 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 this is your responsibility here. This is where you have failed these people. How do we resolve this? And probably get an undertaking from government to say this is the situation. But that meeting had to be called by the South African Human Rights after we contacted them so to convene that particular meeting. Now, going forward, we also think that even to date, we still believe that you know a proper dialogue, a genuine dialogue and a genuine desire to resolve the political will to resolve some of these problems like, for example, prosecuting people that you know kill you know migrants. We have a picture for example, you know, a video, a small video footage you know in in gp's town of somebody murdering someone in broad daylight gorging out their eyes we have everybody's got a picture of that person if we put that picture out there and say this person it won't take two days before that person is identified but nothing of that sort has happened so w when we sit here and, and 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 i say you know to these guys guys you know you are like okay we you, you, are, you are facing the same problems with all migrants but at the end of the day i also still want an answer i need government to commit to say you know what if somebody kills you know a migrant through these xenophobic attacks we've got the national action plan that is supposed to deal with you know uh, the, the 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 head speeches and, and xenophobia we need to see the teeth in these laws so that people that attack or kill a migrant or, or of any sort is also treated like any other person who kills a south african or any other person once that is done then we can all say we are sailing in the same boat but right now there is that exclusivity that says if a migrant a refugee asylum is, is attacked, then that person does not want, you know, we don't see the same level of seriousness in terms of pursuing those particular, you know, criminal activities. That is where the big problem is. If we can give effect, you know, to the ability to deal with those prosecutions, I think that, you know, the colleagues sitting here would also, we would be in a position to speak to them and say, guys, wait a minute. The government, for example, says all of a sudden, if somebody is seen looting or, you know, attacking, you know, a migrant shop, we're going to give them minimum five or ten years. You know, that becomes prohibitive. That says anybody who thinks about doing it knows that, you know what, there's going to be consequences. Then we're going to say we're moving into the right direction. We have seen, you know, laws enacted for, you know, for example, gender-based violence to say, okay, or, or drunken driving. You know, we see bleeds, you know, being held by the police because we're trying to keep a particular crime. We need to see law being put in place to deal with the attack on, you know, migrants or refugees and asylum seekers as a means of trying to, you know, encourage and ensure the safety of, you know, uh, the, the, the migrants. No doubt this situation has reached, uh, you know, crisis point or crisis level, as it were. Yes. And understandably so, because uh, if migrants don't feel safe in South Africa and they want to be, to, to be repatriated elsewhere, I mean, we, we understand where they're, they're coming from. But then, uh, obviously, th this has led to the calls for mass repatriation, which some officials have said is virtually impossible because this can be done on a case-by-case -case basis and looking at the fact that there is about 26 million asylum seekers and refugees worldwide and that number keeps on increasing every year look i think that is exactly the point the issue is i also know i was actually looking at you know the issue of you know libya you know the people that need to be repatriated that are held in detention camps and we are also saying in terms of the law you know, South Africa has got some of the best laws. It is the implementation that is a concern. You know, when you look at refugee laws, it's got the best laws, you know, beautiful, you know, uh, courts. We've been to court, I was on, in court on Friday. We've got people that, you know, asylum seekers, you know, getting released. But you've got to fight, even when the law is very clear, it states these things clearly because there is an unwillingness on the people that are supposed to implement the law to implement the law. So, even as we are talking right now, there is a crisis, there is possibly, you know, that problem that says it might not be possible to real, maybe repatriate, you know, or evacuate, you know, uh, the people that are 
actually protesting now. But what we are saying is, let us see the alternative now to show that there is a desire to bring in a sustainable alternative which will ensure that there is confidence even on the people that are actually complaining to say, yes, definitely, we feel that you know our our, saf our safety is going to be to be to be ensured because from what we read and from what we see it looks like it is impossible it looks like it is difficult to real you know have these you know uh, mass repatriations you know of course we do hear that you know there are allegations that you know the unhcr is also doing it corruptly some other people you know have to pay money you know there's always allegations that will come here and there but we don't know if that is true then that also may, means that that's why there's got a, there, there is a problem but what we are saying is we understand that you know the UNHCR says it cannot do it because there are no countries that can, you know, do that. You know, we can't have it done en masse. And number two, you've got to find a willing country. Normally people have got to go to countries on their own and do this. We understand that. But we're saying, let's have a solution before we have got outbreak of disease, before we are seen as people that don't care, you know, with our own people. These are black people. This is mainly with us Africans, you know. We are failing to find solutions in our own backyard, you know, about issues that really involve us. If we can put our hearts into these issues and say, we've got children sleeping outside there. We've got children, you know, being pulled apart from their mothers like what we saw in Pretoria is that the kind of you know picture that we want the whole world to know Africa for I don't think so if we can sit down and be sober I don't believe that we can take three weeks without finding a solution to this problem if it if the solution for repatriation is not a solution I believe we can find an alternative solution if the stakeholders that are involved here come committedly to say we are going to find the solution I think the solution is within us we need these guys to be very serious about it. And if UNHCR becomes serious, you know, the human rights, the government, we sit down. I believe we have a solution. Even when if it's you not speak of an alternative solution, what are we looking at? Because uh, now the migrants need only one thing to be, uh, I mean, to, to be taken out of South Africa to an alternative country. So if, when you talk of an alternative solution, what is it that you're looking at? I, I don't think that it's, a, it's cast in stone in my view. I think that it's, it's a position that is, you know, led and guided by what has happened. So I think that, you know, that is likely. I think there is a possibility that it can be changed. I mean, I think, you know, when, when Aline is saying, look, we need to deal with South Africa, for example, first, you know, when she says we need to deal with South Africa, that, that statement on its own, you know, tells you that if we can deal with the problems that we had, there should be a possibility that, you know, things could be resolved so i think that as much as that is their position but if they are assured you know that there is going to be steps and that their lives are going to be safe i think this can definitely be i don't want to speak for them but i really believe because remember when i'm speaking here i'm, I'm not i'm speaking of forced migration and you know uh, even voluntary migration you know the moving of forced migration still leaves us with the problem of what of the voluntary migration the other people that are not refugees and, 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 and asylum seekers okay. and they will still face the same problem so for us it is basically to say let us find an umbrella solution and i don't think that it should be our solution that maybe we should real you know see that as, as an ultimate solution to have people evacuated let's solve the main crisis what has brought us here we don't have much time unfortunately Aline uh, please be as brief as you possibly can uh, assuming that South African government officials are watching this program right now what would you like to say to them I would like to ask uh, the South African government to please work hands to hands with UNICEF and to make is for refugee to be relocated out of South Africa. Okay. Now, Alex, what would your ideal solution be? Oh, the ideal solution must be um, just to be relocated from South Africa. And I would like to have this occasion and opportunity to ask uh, why does uh, government, South African government, hold refugee while they're the ones that incite this xenophobic attack to refugees? While they still hold uh, refugees to not move and go out from South Africa? Why I say so? Because all the time UNHCR is saying that they are going to engage with, uh, with uh, government to know how they can have a, a solution and protection. So I'm asking why does government still holding refugee? They should let us go. They have to allow UNCR to work so we may be relocated from another country because here our life is at a stake. And something else that I need to remember just for 20, uh, 20 seconds, we can never change the mind of um, xenophobic people just during the night, like overnight. This will take long to educate people because it has been long people are doing xenophobic attack for quite 11 and going to 12 years. So we can never educate people overnight to say, okay, you have to stay like this with refugees or stay like this with foreigners is impossible okay. because the mind is already corrupted and is xenophobic. Right. So we need to leave South Africa for good. Alex, Aline and Dr. Sbanda, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us.